Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Every Damn Day. It's Jerry at the Fledge here with Aoud uh, Burovoy from Dayton, Ohio. Um, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. And anytime you want to say your name better than I'm saying it, uh, it will yeah, give me another. Very, very good job. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm trying my best to learn how to pronounce everybody's name the way they it's meant to be uh, pronounced. So you're uh, you're with uh, Borovoy Fitness and Shiatsu Shiatsu um, Shiatsu in Dayton, Ohio. Um, welcome to our show here in Lansing. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your company? All right. Well, first of all, again, thank you for having me. It yeah. is uh, not a not a usual thing that I do every day, talking to somebody on on a, on a YouTube channel. So it's exciting. Uh, so I am uh, from Israel, and I was born and raised in Israel, and I came to the United States in 2007 in pursuit of uh, my education. I studied in Israel uh, holistic medicine. So I did uh, four years of shiatsu, which is a Japanese technique based on Chinese medicine. And the focus of that is to bring balance in uh, our body through the energy by doing manipulation of joints, uh, stretching on the, of the body, and using uh, pressure and pressure points to elicit uh, the balance to whatever causes the imbalance in our body. In addition to shiatsu, I've been a personal trainer or a fitness instructor for 21 years already. I started my journey uh, quite late, but uh, at the age of 18. But I was the fitness instructor for the Israeli Police Academy. Mm. So I was actually uh, the trainer for the cadets at the, at the school uh, for eight years. Three years as a, as a soldier and uh, extra five years I stayed as a civilian. That that seems very impressive. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's... It uh, was actually the best job of my life. I yeah. wish I was able to continue that. But the, I had, uh, uh, bigger dreams and thoughts. So that just leads me down all types, types of tangents that I'm not ready to go down yet. But let's talk about a, a simple one. Uh, why sure. Dayton, Ohio? What... Uh, is that where um, your education was, or your your university? Said, so, uh, when I was looking for where I can do my edu my continued education, I was looking into creating or uh, getting an uh, an academic degree in the field of holistic medicine. Uh, because in Israel, it's still unfortunately under a lot of bureaucracy. Uh, we are very much versed with holistic medicine; it's all around. It's in our health system, and people are doing it all the time. We do reflexology, uh, Twina, which is a more uh, high-paced, uh, rhythmic uh, massage, um, Chiatsu, acupuncture, all those types are well-versed in the Israeli uh, society. However, it's considered a certification. Mm. It's not academically uh, allowed or agreed upon. Okay. Uh, so I was looking for a place to get it as a degree. And there were only two places I can do that in the world uh, from my research at the time. One was China, and the other one was the United States. Uh, I chose to go to a place that at least I can articulate myself a little bit, since I, okay. don't, I do not speak Chinese. Uh, and Dayton specifically, my family have uh, friends that moved here uh, in the early 2000s, and they just um, told me about uh, a school nearby. At the time, I didn't have even my bachelor's degree. I just got, got out of the military service. And so I needed to get my bachelor's before my master's degree. So they told me about a, new, a, new, a university here, and I just go, went online, saw something that I might be enjoying or close to what I wanted to study before I uh, continue to the master's degree. And uh, I applied, got accepted, and here I am, 13 years later. So you've been in Dayton for 13 years, and so I 
I used to come to Dayton. I had a customer. I had a software company, and I would come to Dayton and uh, visit them a lot. And Dayton and Lansing are very similar, especially like you have this cool stadium district, and you've got the stadium. You probably yeah. saw all of that kind of get redeveloped. Um, and there's office buildings where you can watch the baseball games and all of that. Sure. Um, are you involved in that part? Of the uh, entrepreneur, I'm, I'm yeah. involved as part of the community. Uh, since that area is a lot of time is allocated to, uh, like you said, the baseball game over there in the stadium, uh, the Dragons, uh, the team here. Um, but they have a lot of uh, festivals during the fall and, and summer time. That is, so it's a booming place for a lot of events. Uh, of course, the Oregon District is right there, which is a huge booming uh, place for restaurants and bars and pubs so yeah. i'm involved more of like being part of the community but it also uh i'm also involved in in uh volunteering so at times uh me and my and my friends or me and my wife we volunteer in different festivals and we just enjoy the community unfortunately with everything that's going uh, going on in this world today this year was not not ideal but we are part of the community try to promote any anything that is local yeah to was, was covid pretty tough on your business were you able to pivot um uh, unfortunately it was extremely tough uh yeah. since uh, my business uh in addition to shiatsu and uh, personal training i teach also krav maga which is the israeli self-defense system mm -hmm. the knowledge that i have is from the military um but it's not considered essential. So when everything halted, uh, it just halted. Now, yeah. uh, a lot of people were talking about, and we saw that also happening, that that uh, tra transfer to online uh, instruction. Instruction. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm not. I'm not a fan of, of doing things online as a videos, because I like the personal touch of it, of teaching. And I always have the, the, the sense that when I instruct, I, I care about how you do things correctly, form and healthy wise, health wise. So if I tell you to do something and I'm there, not there to supervise it and you get injured, uh, I see it as a, as a liability. I see it as something that will be uh, on, on my heart and, and it's hard for me to accept. Yeah. So I, w uh, I couldn't do that, that, that transition into it. Yeah. So you kind of poured yourself into the community while... Uh, I poured myself in the community. I unfortunately found other venues that I was able to work and earn some money. Uh, yeah. So I shifted to something that is outside a little bit from my uh, speciality. But still at the same, in the same field. So I work... Uh, I work at the local rec center and I work at the YMCA, kind of like on the floor at the gym, making sure that everything is okay. And okay. slowly but surely, when you reopened, uh, I found a job at a, a local spa, so I do massages there. So I'm kind of like juggling four different jobs. It sounds That's... a lot, but uh, not a lot of hours because it's still the economy is not yeah. getting back as fast. But it also sounds like this is just like what you were built to do, what you were, what you love to do. Um, I mean, you've smiled ever since you got on to even prep for this. You've been smiling the whole time as you've talked about your company and how you got here. It, um, it, is, it, is, it, is, uh, it is my passion because uh, from, from the start, one of my goals to start this company, and I started it in 2017, because of different uh, constructions, uh, uh, con concerns and uh, restrictions. Because again, I'm not a citizen in, in this country. So yeah. I had to go through a lot of hoops to go and get to this uh, location that I'm able to work really here. Uh, and that's completely a different <laughs> talk we can have <laughs> for an hour. But uh, my, my goal was always, and always from the start, is to help people. Uh, I am from the start every time uh, I like helping people and help them to uh, get better and mature and find their path for a better, more healthier uh, life. 
Well, I, I'm really happy that you do that. I, I look at the American uh, health care, if you can even call it that, as you know, a drug company that has this medical delivery system, and yeah. that's what the hospital across the street is to me. But when I look at somebody like you and the work that you're doing and looking at things holistically, um, I've got a yin-yang here, so I've got the, the balance built into my yeah. tattoos anyway. And um, just really understanding that healthcare even is uh, communal. It's part of the community. It's we've got to be talking about it. We've got to uh, take care of each other and not just always giving each other a pill to make everything go away. It's uh, it's bigger I, than I that. Created, I, uh, I created my business cards and I found a saying that is very dear to my heart that I truly believe. And it goes like this, uh, our body communicate, communicates to us loud and clear if only we are willing to listen. Yeah. So a lot of times we forget to listen to our own body and what it communicates to us. Uh, you know, there's the saying, uh, especially in the fitness industry, no pain, no gain. Yeah. This is a false uh, statement in my book because the pain is there to let you know that something is going on. Yeah, and just because you don't feel pain, it doesn't mean that you did not progress in your in your road in your way to become better, stronger, or whatever the goal was. So, uh, I like that because I, you know, I always uh, whenever I'm starting to get cramps and I need, know that I need potassium, I also crave bananas. Right. I mean, my body does talk to me, and I do try to listen to it, but I'm not. I also smoked cigarettes for 20 years so I'm, i don't listen to it all the time uh which which is again uh you know some people will, will frown upon and say this is not okay the way i look at it i always tell people as a trainer i'm very unconventional because i i tell my clients especially when it comes to nutrition you can eat whatever you want you just need to understand what are the consequences and a lot of times when we approach things in life when you sum things up eventually it goes down to habits and it's about healthy habits it's not about what you eat yes there's there's merit to it but there's always the jokes like you know somebody will say you know my grandmother lived to be in 90 smoking and everything like that and people say like how she do that well minding her own business you know <laughs> her own damn business like, yeah. nobody can tell you what to do or not you need to realize what benefits you and what causes you harm. There are things that you know that are not good for you, but at the same time, it, the switch has to come in the way you view yourself and how you want to correct it, not by somebody bantering and, and hitting on your head and telling you stop, stop, stop. Yeah. So, uh, well, now I don't, I, I want to ask you, uh, Yesterday I had uh, a guy from, uh, or two days ago, I had a guy from the UAE yeah. was on, and he was an environmental uh, specialist, he, sustainable development, and he talked about people's habits too, that that's the number one thing that affects the environment. And I guess it's probably the number one thing that affects our health and probably the number one thing that affects each other. Um, if I kept rolling... Um, but before I talk about that, I was I was just trying to get to know you a little bit. You're the first person I've had on the show who I don't really know. Um, this is, today's the first time we've talked, and so I wanted to look at your Facebook. So I'm stalking you a little bit, and I saw a post about uh, the history being made in Bahrain and UAE, and I knew you two were so close. One person from the UAE, one person from uh, Israel. Uh, Tell me what you meant by that history. I, actually, I know, but tell the people You're who are listening. Trouble, no, right. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I'm, I'm, um, I'm joking, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, well, if uh, our listeners and our viewers know, or if they follow, uh, there was a peace treaty, or I, I, I view it as a peace agreement, between the UAE and Bahrain and, and my country, Israel, that basically just opened up again the diplomatic uh, road 
of communication between the, the countries in the Middle East. And uh, for me, that was a huge, huge, huge step forward. Uh, and I made a, the comment of uh, history is being made because two things. One, uh, it is a, a step forward piece that haven't been there in, in many, many years. And two, from, from a personal, personal perspective, uh, being from Israel, I never thought that in my life I would see this happen. So that was the history from, from that perspective. Uh, I really, uh, as much I am a peace person, uh, as much I have friends from all around the world, I have friends from Iran, I have friends from Saudi Arabia, uh, from places that we are. And literally, I had people from the, those countries look at me the first time and said to me that, I can't believe we actually talked to each other. We are sworn enemies. Yeah. Uh, and then after a little bit of uh, talking and, and hanging out together, uh, they thank me for being their friend. Because I look at you as a person. Uh, I I do my best not to put in politics into things because, again, I think with a little bit of uh, food, great food, we all have great food in our countries. And <laughs> sometimes alcohol if you drink sometimes. But just getting together uh, and talking about you see how much we are similar than different. Oh, yeah. I think that's so important. And I actually had a, a Lebanese guy on the show on Monday, and we talked about peace and sister cities. And just if you don't have that dialogue, we can't understand each other. But at the end of the day, we all have someone that we love and that we're passionate for. And we have, you know, if we have children, we love our children and we love our parents and we love our siblings and our friends. We have so much in common. And the things that aren't in common actually turn out to be the strength of the relationship, right? Yeah. So the things you can teach me and I can teach you are, are the strength of us getting to know each other. So, and it's always exciting to, to meet somebody out of your your culture or from a different country. I yeah. love different cultures, specifically food. So I always enjoy trying new things and, and explore and broaden the taste buds in my mouth from, from well, different countries. We're, we're going to come back to food in a <laughs> second because of another question that I've got to ask you from the lady from yesterday. Uh, but before that, the show is called Every Damn Day. Is there anything you do every damn day that pushes the needle forward in whatever your mission is with yourself or your company? Um, I try my best. I, I, I must be, uh, I'm a very frank person. I'm, not, I'm very honest. Not every day I'm able to do what I want to do, push the needle. Uh, I try my best to be visually uh, on social media active, even though it's very hard for a small uh, business to be extremely active when you have big companies that have marketing uh, funds that they can, in 10 seconds, people forget. People forget what you post or see. Uh, so that's the difficult part. But the main thing that I do every day is I try to help uh, somebody. Whether or not I do it for my business, by getting paid, uh, on my service, uh, I try my best to help them by giving them an advice or direct them to something that they might explore that will help them benefit their health. Just those kind of simple things. Uh, sometimes it's not, again, it's not from a money perspective. Um, again, like I said in the beginning, my course to help people. I thrive on, yeah. on, on being uh, able to help somebody do a little bit of a change. Uh, so that's what I try to do every day. I, I love that answer. Um, so the uh, the thing I was hitting at about the food, because I love food too, um, and I had a baker on the show uh, yesterday, um, and she's from uh, she's from Manchester in England. Go and <laughs> she's a Liverpool fan, though. Wow. We got we talked about that. <laughs> Um, should I ask you the question? Uh, um, her question was, which, what was her uh, favorite team? That was from the guy from Dubai. Um, and why? I should ask you that question. But her question to you was, what's your favorite dessert? Uh, Ironically. It's hard. Uh, I'm not a huge uh, sweets person. 
I'm always, every time I eat too sweet, I need like either a cup of coffee or some water to balance it out. Uh, but I would say uh, if I had to choose, one of the things that I always enjoy is a, a, a good molten lava cake uh, dessert. That that combination of oozing warm chocolate kind of in with an ice cream kind of balance it out. Oh, well. Man, I love that too. That sounds spectacular. We're gonna and have I'm to get to. to... My interest in United States just because of my dad. My dad started growing up watching games with him, and, and it's thick. Even though my brother is a Liverpool fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, you know, her answer was the exact same just about, is that her, well, her stepdad was a Liverpool fan, so the whole family was a Liverpool fan. Um, and so it seems to be... Uh, Maybe that's passed down from generation to generation when it comes to football or soccer, as we call it here. Yeah. Um, so tomorrow yeah. I have a uh, an entrepreneur who is a musician who is on the show. And I pass your question to him. I'll ask him that tomorrow. So do you have a, a question for our entrepreneur musician? Yeah. Uh, my question that popped into my head was... Uh, what influenced him to become a musician? Uh, I know myself that I'm not very talented when it comes to music, uh, and that's why I know that I, even though I might be enjoying music, I'm influenced not to share my lack of, of, of uh, musicality to the world. Even though when people ask me about what instrument do I play, I always tell them, I play no instrument, but I do play on people's nerves a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, so, I, like, I like bantering with people a lot. I think he will love to answer that question. But now i got to kind of flip it back on you. And rather than talk about the what inspired you to be a musician or not be a musician in your case, uh, what, what's inspired you? Why are you doing the, uh, the fitness and the holistic health? The holistic health. Yeah. I think what influenced me, uh, and I touched that, uh, I think, quite a lot doing this, is the desire to help people. Uh, growing up, I was very active as a kid. Uh, I wasn't uh, an athlete, per se, but I mean, growing up in Israel, we played soccer all the time uh, on the street, you know, going down, all the kids in the neighborhood, putting two shoes on each side, here's your goal, and you play soccer. Uh, so I was very active. And I actually, actually, accidentally became a, a trainer for the police academy. Uh, but that kind of like started kind of like evolving into uh, kind of like an outlet or a road for me to help people. Because I enjoy to, uh, I enjoy instructing. I, I enjoy teaching people to think differently or to show them a, a correct way of doing something. And especially when it comes to their health. Uh, from uh, the shiatsu perspective, uh, all my life, I always, uh, when my my uncle used to come and visit, he lived like an hour and a half away from us. He always came and was like, oh, my back is hurting. Can you come and, and massage it for me? I was, you know, the kid, the uncle came over. He come and you rub his shoulders. He, he throws a little bit of money for you. Uh, but I always... You know, I got tired uh, after 10, 15 minutes of, of rubbing the muscles. And I had the thought of like, okay, I want to learn that more professionally, not as a profession, but for myself, my own benefit. So I can know the technique so uh, I don't get, become tired or exhausted. Uh, and when I explored where I can go and, and study this, and I went to a school near my home, they didn't have a uh, Swedish massage. They offered shiatsu, and I had no idea what it is. And, and when I went inside the, the presentation, they talked about Zen, and they talked about balance, and yin and yang. And at the time, being a 20-year-old kid, or uh, yeah, it was a 20-year-old kid, I was very practical. I used to, I used to fix computers, I used to, uh, Teach and or, uh, math or, think, or English to the kids in the neighborhood. So I had no clue. So that kind of like whew, flew off uh, over my head. 
but then they offered 15 minutes of practice time for, with one of the therapists for me to ex experience what it is. And as soon as that therapist started working on me, I was hooked. I fell in love. It was the best thing. I felt rejuvenated. I felt energized. It was great. So that's how I stumbled upon Chiatu and kind of it became one of my uh, my passion to do. That that's a, a very good story. I love that story. And yeah. uh, you know, your answer about uh, you know what you do every damn day, why you got into this. Uh, I knew you were going to be an amazing guest. And, uh, you know, it was Claire who uh, connected us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been just a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, you're very interesting. And thank you for doing what you do. Um, the American medical system has to change. And to have someone, uh, people from the inside and people from the outside coming in to make that change and to help us all heal. Um, I think is so important, and I got a million other things to talk to you about someday. But we'll Maybe do that over. Uh, another show, another time. Yeah, that would be great. So um, I'm going to take us out real quick. Uh, every damn day happens every damn day at 2 p.m. on Sunday. We've got another episode of 99 Problems, but a pitch ain't one. And uh, who? Anything you want to say to? Uh, um, Take us out. Well, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to, to you, Jerry, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I want to thank, of course, to Claire. She, uh, I wasn't sure exactly how this is going to go, but I'm, I'm uh, about opportunities and take, taking risks. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad I was able to do that. And most importantly, uh, I want to wish us uh, to go, to be stronger and get stronger in the year to come and, and let's overcome this COVID uh, situation and hopefully we'll bring peace to the world again. Uh, very yeah. excited about what's going on in the Middle East, but mostly between us because uh, it seems that we are all going down and down because of, this, of the, what's going on in the world, but we need to boost and lift yeah. everybody up, uh, each other up and uh, move forward. So uh, on Monday, we closed out with the word peace on Wednesday we closed out with the word salam and today we'll close out with the word shalom shalom yeah shalom yep. so shalom everybody thank you so very shalom. much <laughs>